Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for um, joining us um, today with uh, Ms. Tamala Trussell. Um, she is um, the um, founder of Move Past Plastic. And um, I will be just learning a bit more about uh, her position, uh, her goals um, for her um, organization, and also um, a little bit about our Connecting Us All series. Um, thank you, Tamala, for joining us. Yes, thank you for inviting me, Natalie. I'm glad to be a part of this series. <laughs> me too. Um, first, let's start off by learning a little bit more about your position. Um, can you explain your title, uh, the year you started, and um, your current job duties? Sure. So um, I am the founder of Move Past Plastic and an educator. Um, we first began to, uh, I first began to organize meetings in January of 2020, but our first official meeting as Move Past Plastic was in June of 2021. And um, so, uh, basically, as the founder, um, I continually go to educational opportunities, webinars, conferences. I engage with my um, community as a master watershed steward, um, sitting on the um, executive board of the Climate Action Commission for our local municipality, um, do alarm stream testing, um, and um, also I'm a volunteer for the Cumberland um, uh, Collaborative and um, CCWA, which is Connecticut Creek Watershed Association. Um, so all of this involvement helps me understand um, about uh, single-use plastic and all its many, many multitude of connecting um, uh, intersexual and in, intersecting um, uh, systems and topics from climate change to social justice, mm -hmm. etc. So, uh, taking this information helps lead me to um, understand what. Um, initiatives we need to address, what to put on the website, the newsletter, what to have meetings on, what presentations and educational actions need to be taken. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds like a, a great way to um, you know, help people learn about, um, about plastic use and ways that um, we can be more informed about our usage as well. Um, and so what is your experience um, with helping communities uh, understand the outcomes of single plastic usage? Yeah, so um, I uh, give many presentations to various organizations that reach out and um, they can pick their, you know, the topic that they're um, interested in. So if they're interested in learning about plastics in watersheds or for health or for uh, fast fashion, or if they're, um, you know, whatever their interest, you know, is in it. And so um, I uh, connect with them in that way. Uh, I also um, have educational outreach events and opportunities for them to interact um, uh, through uh, civic action events. So, for example, Plastic Free July. Last Plastic Free July, we had um, uh, an event where they could go and learn about single-use plastic day by day. And so they learned about the entire life cycle of plastic. Week one, starting um, with learning about the Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act. 
um, which is trying to address uh, single-use plastic to the recycling myths, false solutions, and then we learned about what are some solutions and then what they could do. Then we mm -hmm. had a pups up challenge that um, where people could see if they can go to the store and purchase their groceries without having, um, you know, getting single-use plastic packaging. Mm -hmm. This um, this particular um, Plastic Free July, we are doing um, civic action of reaching out to our um, store CEOs of Giant and Walmart. And then this Saturday, the 30th, we will be um, going to Walmart and having an educational um, opportunity where we talk about the harms of single-use plastic and teach people about what they can and cannot recycle. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I also have done a, a PFAS campaign where I educated the public about the harms of PFAS, which is uh, one of the many harmful um, thousands of chemicals that are used in plastics to extract the um, ethane gas and also it's in the plastics themselves and the materials made of plastic and um, how it can be found in our drinking water. And so uh, we made a toolkit that could um, be uh, given to the public to learn more about um, this hazardous chemical and how to um, share that knowledge with their municipal leaders and ask them to test their water for PFAS mm -hmm. contaminants. Um, and then also we had them write a um, letter uh, for the public comment in which the state's uh, Bureau of Safe Drinking Water was um, uh, having public comment to make um, a regulated contaminants ruling on plastics as a hazardous mm -hmm. chemical. And so we gave um, people the information about it and, and um, uh, encouraged them and gave them a forum to write in for that public comment or give oral testimony. So we just do a variety of things like that. That's a great way for um, the community to interact uh, with this topic as well and um, you know going to Walmart and Giant and being able to meet the community there as well is a great way you know, to have them involved um, in the subject matter as well. Um, what are the main factors of plastic usage that can affect water quality? Yeah, so everyone is very familiar with seeing plastic litter on, you know, our roads, highways, in our neighborhoods, and in our parks and everything. But um, these, uh, the plastic litter makes their way into our creeks and streams and eventually the ocean. And we can see that um, these uh, plastic litter contaminants there as well. However, what people don't understand is that this is just a small fraction of the plastic that is produced and um, is in our environment. So the litter we see in the ocean, for example, is just 1% of the um, yes, actual the plastic we be, uh, because mm -hmm. plastics break down to micro and nanoplastics. Yeah. And the um, Penn Environment did a study and found 100% of their 315 water samples from our water bodies in Pennsylvania were um, contained microplastics in them. Mm -hmm. and so these get into our food chain and um, uh, so we consume plastics and their harmful chemicals through ingesting and it's in 30% of our dust, that household dust that we breathe. Mm -hmm. So the plastics are much more than a litter problem. They are a toxic hazardous okay. chemical problem. 
um, and they're found in everything from our breast milk and to uh, the fetus in the womb because they pass the placental period. So over 10,000 different chemicals um, that are used to create plastic, flame retardants, hardeners, softeners, lubricants, phthalates, biosphenols, stabilizers, and UV protectors. And um, they, uh, it is noted that 2,400 of these chemicals are identified as um, potentially hazardous because they have a persistent bioaccumulating um, and toxic criteria according to the European Union. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing to know about, mm -hmm. you know, how those are in uh, everyday are items that we use and, um, you know, the, you the plastic think, bottles uh, or that we use and uh, food we eat hold, um, uh, and how it's, you know, all around us. And yeah. especially so from think, the study that, that you um, talked about, um, it was amazing, you know, 100% yes, of absolutely. the 53 bodies of water contain microplastics and how I that goes into our great. food chain, which is... You're welcome. Have a great day. So, something you know to to think about you know as we go through life and um and that is uh why we are happy also to have you uh in our connecting us all series um and how did you learn about the connecting us all series and what do you hope people can get out of attending the series yeah, I learned about it through the Conard Gwinnett Creek Watershed Association. As I said, I'm a board member there, and um, so they were notified by um, the person who's organizing the series, and um, he was reaching out uh, to the Watershed Association to set up a creek paddle. And so they asked for volunteers, and I volunteered to help out with that. And um, what I hope people get out of, um, you know, the creek paddle is that they're connected to their world, to their environment, and that um, their environment, their watershed, this particular creek um, for our local area is what gives them their water. And what we do um, surrounding that, whether it's building homes or um, businesses or industry, farming, our land usage impacts the water quality. And so they um, are an integral part of the health of their water and um, they need healthy water. And so I want them to just see the beauty um, and the life of it and for them to understand that it it gives them life. Yeah, and especially how, um, how you know, the health of the watershed affects everything in our ecosystem. Um, and that is uh, an important thing to, um, you know, be informed about and um, learn about. And that uh, paddle trip on the Conda de Gwinnett is uh, September 24th. Um, and Tamala um, will be holding that. And we also have um, uh, a registration form that um, we all have available uh, for those who are interested um, in the session. Um, and can you also list some possible resources and um, you know ways that our community can learn about single-use plastic and um, you know, ways to help their fellow neighbors and community learn about it? Yeah, sure. So um, for for what's happening locally, as well as connecting with state and um, federal legislation. You can go to Move Past Plastic and to reach out, you could go to movepastplastic.com. 
and movepastplastic at gmail.com. Also some good, I call them big sister resources um, and uh, organizations that I work directly with and we work on initiatives and campaigns together are the Break Free From Pollution, Beyond Plastics, Plastic mm -hmm. Pollution Coalition, and for health things, um, I work with the Environmental Working Group. Great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And um, and I will um, also put these resources um, in the description uh, of this video, um, along with the links. And I will also put additional um, resources and uh, educational links uh, in the description below for everyone to view. Um, and uh, this series will start September 8th and uh, we are going to be having um, many different uh, sponsors uh, such as the Cumberland uh, County Conservation District um, as well as um, uh, the um, Cumberland Valley Trout Unlimited um, and um, also help from the PA Geological Survey and many more. Um, and we thank you again, Tamala, for uh, just learning a little bit more about Move Past Plastic and its importance. Um, and um, I hope that everyone joins us uh, for our Cumberland Valley series. Um, and thank you again, Tamala.